Welcome to Red Carpet Radio, bringing you closer to the artists making the music. Billy Bragg. Roy, Roy, Roy. Sandbrook. Sandbrook. The only alternative with Roy Sandbrook. Hey there, Roy here. How you doing? DJ JD is uh, sort of been hovering around a uh, beautiful day, sort of ligging and uh, dossing. We haven't seen him for a wee while, but I'm sure he'll pop up somewhere. DJ JD, where are you? Um, I'm actually backstage. Ah, here he is. Ba- backstage at the Levelers, beautiful day, 2005. You can kiss my ass for a backstage pass. Absolute pleasure to be in the presence of the one and only Mr. Billy Bragg. Wow, it's great to be here. It's only up the road from where I live as well, so it's even better. Cool. You got a website, Billy? I do, I do. Billybragg.co.uk. Everything you need to know about Braggness is there. Tell us about your latest record release, Billy. Uh, well, actually, I haven't had a record out, uh, a new record out for a couple of years, but I'm just reissuing uh, my entire back catalogue with uh, uh, extra CDs, so that's sort of like, that's been taking up a lot of my time. They'll be coming out in the uh, spring. How much would that be roughly available for on your website? Oh, I suppose they'll be about uh, 9.99 on the website when they come out. Uh, we've got a lot of bootlegs for sale on there, and we've had a few, down- we haven't done many downloads, but we have done a few downloads, it's been quite popular. Uh, the times they are a changing. Bob Dylan for the 21st century. Yeah. Billy Bragg. I don't know about that, uh, but uh, you know, I think there's always got to be a room for music that says something other than "I'm great, you're shit, you like my socks," and that's what I try and write. Uh, we saw you at um, Edinburgh for the Make Poverty History Rally, yeah. and you told a great story about when you first went to your own uh, rally. Uh, it was to see, um, was it the Clash? And you was, was. A, a, your mate of yours, Tom Robinson, and you was yeah. together. I went to Rock Against Racism, uh, the first big carnival in April 1978, uh, to see The Clash. And uh, Tom Robinson was actually top of the bill that day. The Clash played in the afternoon. They'd been added quite late to the bill. And uh, me and my mates had gone there as Clash fans. And uh, when Robinson played, he had a song called uh, Sing If You're Glad To Be Gay. And when he sung that song, a load of... A load of guys around us started snogging and kissing. <laughs> and uh, we realised we'd been standing under this big sign, this big banner that said, Sing if you're allowed to be gay. And, and I'd never met any gay, out gay men before, you know. Um, been coming from Barking in Essex. Uh, but uh, I got to thinking, why are these gay men at this Rock Against Racism gig? It's about black people. And I realised that actually the fascists, the racists, the xenophobes are against anybody who is in any way different whether they're black or gay or punk or whatever. So I, I said to myself from that day onward, I would be as different as possible. I go out of my way to annoy those people. And, uh, and that's why, I, I, you know, it's been a huge inspiration in what I do. Getting back to your website, Billy. Cracking website, mate. www.billybrag.co.uk. It's just a wealth of information. Um, if nobody's ever been on that, for the benefit of Tinternet Radio listeners, what can they what can they expect from your website? Well, we've got uh, we've got all the usual kind of stuff that you have. You know, we've got lyrics, we've got um, uh, you know uh, news, uh, photographs, stuff like that. Um, there's a kind of like uh, you know uh, websites that I think people other people should be interested in. There's also a section of other Billy Bragg websites, some of which are brilliant, some of which are utterly balmy, but they're all worth a look. And then we have a, a kind of open uh, guest book where people talk to each other and scream at each other and fall out and love each other and hate each other. Uh, and, uh, and then we have a forum where you can actually get into a particular thread. And uh, it, being in the, the guest book's okay, but it can be a bit like being stuck in the middle of the motorway, trying to get from one place to another. And the guest book's a little bit more reasonable, a bit more measured, a bit more easy to find. And, you know, we, we're, trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to sort of expand the website to engage more with people, particularly at the moment when I'm not touring. Uh, it's a really good way of engaging with people. How much input personally do you have on your own website? Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit. I mean, there's a guy who does it for me, Toby, in our office. But, you know, everything, you know, it's a lot of suggestion about what, what I would like, what he would like, you know. Um, I ask him to put particular news items that I like on there, stuff like that. Superb. Well, it's a quality site. And uh, we was on there the other night, and uh, we came across this rather very, very interesting news article about the last protest. Yeah. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we've copied it off your website, and I think it really needs to be repainted because Mark Chadwick's missing <laughs> from there as well as yourself. Yeah. Well, you're on there, but Mark Chadwick should be yeah. there. It's What's a, all that about? It's a, it's a religious icon uh, of uh, based on the Last Supper with a load of protest singers around. Looks like the corpse of Joe Hill, who is the great political folk singer and if I can tell you who I think they all are I think it's Bob Marley John Lennon uh, Bruce Springsteen me 
Bob Dylan and Joan Baez. Why I'm in between Springsteen and Dylan, I don't really know. Uh, then Joe Hill, then uh, Pete Seeger, Woody Guthrie, um, Bob Geldof, Bono and Michael Franci. I think. Have I missed anybody out? Victor Hara. Victor Hara is still on there as well, yeah. And uh, it's an interesting... It's in, a, it's in an exhibition, uh, which is in an art gallery in Sydney, Australia, if you're in Sydney, Australia. And uh, it's pretty big, and it's pretty... It's a pretty groovy piece of picture. Very, very weird looking. Uh, it doesn't actually say who Judas is, though. We don't know who the Judas in that is. I don't, and I don't want to cast any any uh, dispersions in anyone's life. Steady now. Uh, so, did, was you actually invited over? You was told about this and they said you need you to get you over no, here no. to... No, the picture, you mean? Yeah. No, guys... In the just, art gallery in no, Australia. Guys just sent us a JPEG. That was the first we knew about it. Right. So, hopefully, we'll see this uh, maybe in a British museum. Yeah. The National Portrait Gallery. Yeah. Yeah, I should have done one of those little signs that you have on the internet with a funny face. What are they called? Mm. Icons. A little funny face icon that should have appeared on the website after I say, yes, perhaps we'll see it in the gallery. <laughs> Beautiful days, 2005. Uh, tell us about the set list that you're going to put on tonight. Can you oh, reveal a few? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. We're, we're starting with a Ronnie Lane song. How about that? Superb. Uh, we're backstage here with DJ JD. Uh, yeah, uh, like to ask Billy. The song New England, what inspired you to write it and obviously choose the good old Kirsty McCall? Well, um, I, what inspired me to write it was I saw two shooting stars and they weren't shooting stars, they were satellites flying side by side. And I was walking home from the pub and I came home and wrote the song then. And Kirsty, bless her, heard it and, uh, and she recorded her own, uh, you know, a brilliant, brilliant version that, that really, you know, it's probably the, the, my well, it's one of my favourite Billy Bragg songs, period now, a version. So. Uh, I was very fortunate she did it because I was a huge fan of Kirsty long before I became famous. So it really was great. Billy, we do a lot of work with the BBC. What are your views on internet radio? It's the future, I think, really. I mean, in the end, it's all about uh, who controls the means of distribution and production. And what punk was about was making your own records, writing your own magazines, creating your own style, and having your own radio station. And the internet, to me, is, you know, everyone can do it. The whole kind of podcasting thing, I think, is revolutionary. Because instead of having to sort of... Uh, conform to the, the stereotypes to get your music on the radio, you can make the root music you want, providing you can find the audience through the internet to, who are into that music. So good to speak to you. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. Thanks very much. All the best, man. Red Carpet Radio. Redcarpetradio.com. You're better. Internet station. Internet station.